Before the integrated starter generator can be taken out, both the transmission and the ISG control unit must be removed. Then undo the screw of the sensor plug on the control housing. And insert the plug into the bracket of the connection panel of the ISG. The sensors of the intake and exhaust camshaft are also removed. A screw must be loosened to do this. The hose to the air filter is also removed. The work that now follows takes place under the vehicle. Remove the screws of the centering flange as well as the centering flange itself. Then you can disconnect the hoses for the coolant. And remove the transmission oil cooler as well as the coolant inlet nozzle. Now remove the crankshaft sensor. The next step is to remove the breather from the control housing. Then the engine must be turned to the ignition TDC. Observe the direction of rotation of the engine. Also check the camshaft positions via the opening of the camshaft sensors. Then the mounting plate on the integrated starter generator is brought into position and screwed on by hand. Once the plate is fixed, loosen the screws of the ISG to the crankshaft. The screws on the mounting plate can then be tightened. Observe the specified torque. Now the screws of the ISG to the crankshaft can be removed. The auxiliary mounting shaft is then inserted. Now the integrated starter generator can be removed from the vehicle. Make sure to guide the sensor plug through the opening of the control housing cover. Then assemble the three supports of the fixture. The ISG can now be placed on a workbench for inspection. In order to measure the air gap between the stator and the rotor, the handles must first be removed. The dimensions of the gauge can be found in the corresponding VIS document. Then use a multimeter to measure the phase resistance of the coils. To do this, check the phases U and V, V and W, as well as W and U, one after the other. Also check the phases X and Y, Y and Z, as well as Z and X. Refer to the VIS document for the set points. For better visibility, the installation of the ISG is shown on a removed M256 engine. It's important that you replace all screws, the centering flange and all seals. First, the ISG is inserted into the recess of the engine block. Make sure that the plug of the control unit is inserted correctly through this opening. Now the ISG is fixed to the engine. 
These three screws are initially tightened only hand tight and then tightened with the specified torque. The Newton meter specifications can be found in the VIS document. You can then hand tighten the four screws connecting the ISG and the crankshaft. Once this is done, all eight screws connecting the mounting plate to the ISG can be undone. First remove the four inner screws and then the four outer screws. The mounting plate can then be removed. Now you must hand tighten the three larger outer screws. Then tighten them with the specified torque. The previously positioned plug to the control unit of the ISG is now first hand tightened and then tightened with torque. Now tighten the four screws connecting the ISG and the crankshaft. A colleague will hold the crankshaft for you. Make sure that you always tighten the screws crosswise. Turn until the rotor flange and the crankshaft flange are in contact. Only then are they tightened with torque. Now the centering flange can be inserted. Again the screws are tightened crosswise, first hand tight and then with torque. Then tighten all screws with the rotation angle specified in this. This concludes your work.